Hey, welcome to the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna give a full garden tour for the month of July 2020. Now let's get growing. What's going on YouTube Gardener? It's your boy Sydney from the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna show you a complete full garden tour for the month of July 2020. Now we do a lot of these garden tours once a month. We'll put a playlist above there so that way you can check out from the beginning of the season up till now. And then if you're new to the channel and haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss an upload. Now we're going to start right here with our compost bin. We've been having this compost pile almost since we first started with our gardening uh, area. And now that we have depleted our compost from uh, last year, we're going to do a experiment of what uh, Gary from the Rusted Garden done. Since we have a lot of cardboard boxes and we have cut a lot of this grass, we're going to start uh, incorporating and try to speed up the process of getting this compost going. All right, so next we have our two-tier uh, container garden, and we got this infra, uh, this design from Rachel from Garden for Cheap, and we saw it on one of her videos, and we liked the fact that it gave us an extension of our garden, and we've been loving it ever since. Now, we used to have Mrs. Naked Garden and flower bed, now we got our extra excessive amount of tomatoes that we were going to transplant uh, uh give it to pops garden but since this whole covid incident we couldn't go down there we didn't want to risk his health or anything so we decided this to keep our tomatoes here and i love these blue cream uh, tomatoes that we have and they once they get right when they get yellow that's when it's good to pick and since we have mostly all organic no chemical spray that is nice. And then we got these uh, ground cherry. Uh, Mrs. Naked Gardener loved these ground cherries. Basically what she was telling me, once they fall to the ground, that's when they're ripe. And so we took a few from uh, of our beds over there and they were kind of very citrusy type of uh, flavor. I'm not a fan of it. She likes it so she can have all at it. But so far we just basically have our tomatoes and our peppers. Uh, these are our Cubanellis, and they're getting big, and uh, we can't wait to uh, harvest all of those. Next, we'll go over to the uh, flower bed. All right, so uh, this is Mix Mrs. Naked Gardener's flower bed. Uh, used to be our a three sister experiment that we tried to do last year it never took off too well uh, so I just gave this straight to Mrs. Naked Gardener allowed her to do anything that she wanted to do so she planted some flowers and some herbs in here this is some lavender uh, in these containers that's new from uh, last uh, garden tour we got some horseradish and some sugar cane that we got oh excuse me that we got from uh, the grocery store and they're starting to sprout up and then we got some potato slips. And this potato slip we got from Rob Epsion's Family Garden. They sent us some, uh, some pota potatoes. And I think they were some type of purple potatoes. We'll put the description down below of what they were. Uh, and we're using this container, a 20 gallon fabric container as a, a dual crop uh, container. So we got some sweet potatoes and the horseradish growing in there. So next we'll go over to the drying rack slash curing station. All right, so this is a drying rack slash curing station that I built for Mrs. Naked Gardener for the simple fact when we're harvesting stuff out of our garden, we're able to basically put it right here on the drying rack and allow it to dry and cure, especially when we just did our onions and garlic. We're just able to put it on here and then toward the end of the end of the summer we're gonna when we pull up the 
uh, turmeric and the uh, ginger and other crops that we have going into the gardener garden right now we're gonna be able to put it on here allow it to cure uh, and then uh, dry it out and then we'll be able to put it inside and use it for whatever we need to do from there All right, over here, we're doing an experiment that we got uh, the idea from Jag from Daisy Creek Farm and also from Gary, the uh, rustic gardener. Uh, we got two similar plants. We got our shishito plants over here and our okra plants over here. And these plants, we're gonna be doing a, a peroxide test just, just to see how well the uh, how peroxide spray actually does for the plant. We're going to be putting out a video about that so uh, if you're new to the channel you haven't done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon so when that video comes out you'll be able to catch it and see the after effects from that. Alright this is our compost tea maker slash worm tea maker. Uh, we've been using this a lot when we're fertilizing our garden area and we think we came up with a good solution to increase the flow and productivity to making an active aerated compost tea. So stay tuned for that. Um, we've got to do a little test piece on that, but uh, get you one of these 32 gallons trash cans if you have a big garden or anything of that nature. So that way it will help get your fertilization a lot better. We'll put the video description of how we fertilize our gardens down below. All right, right here is Mrs. Naked Gardener Herb Garden. And basically all of this is her herbs, spices, and stuff that she uses on a regular basis. Uh, we have a lot of basil, uh, tarragon, uh, culinary sage, uh, rosemary over there and then in these containers here we got uh, different types of mints from lemon balm to uh, peppermint spearmint and some regular sage some spicy oregano so this is something that she uses on a regular basis and then during most of these are perennials and then uh, during the fall we're going to incorporate these with a uh, fall uh, herb garden we're going to be doing some parsley and cilantro and other cool weather herbs from there but this is something that she uses on a regular she's going to be doing some dry spices and a lot of a lot of pesto so we make sure that she does a lot of uh, a basil for the pesto all right here we have our mrs. naked gardeners container garden where we have some leftover tomatoes that we had extras of some squashes this is our first year doing squashes and we've been having a, a hard problems with some uh, squash vine borers and so since Mrs. Naked Gardener had these key lime uh, marigolds we decided to plant these right here since they're supposed to be a good companion plant to kind of ward off or uh, kind of must the smell of of any other plants and squash and stuff like this so we're going to try to see how it's going to incorporate with these squashes over here all right, so we've been using a good uh, neem oil slash Captain Jack slash peppermint essential oil and spraying about every uh, two to three days on the squash plants. And it's definitely been helping out uh, with the spider mites and the spiders. If you've seen our last garden tour, you notice that now we don't have to worry about any type of spider mites issues that we've been having since last time. Uh, we do still trying to find out a good way to get these uh, squash borers uh, from attacking our plants but seeing we're just basically every day just coming out and checking underneath the leaves and seeing if we can find any bugs and we basically squish them um, and when we find them uh, but we have a lot of squashes here we got the patty pan uh, look see we got one right here you found another one? yeah it's hiding Where'd it go? We've been hunting them, so they're running from us. Uh, anyway, I think this squash plant is basically dead. This one as well. Uh, this one's been doing decent. 
this one we'll see this one's been doing pretty good and then here we have our uh, ginger correct yes and that's been growing very well this we got from the grocery store planted into the ground and then we got mrs naked gardener sun chokes uh, we, she planted this one with, and she did a dual crop of uh, the wasabi mm -hmm. radish. Yeah. And now this got too hot for the wasabi radish. It's just basically now this all sun choked. Uh, here we have Mrs. Nicky Gardner curry plant. Uh, it's been thriving very well. We need to start showing a showcase of this of, uh, from right now to the next garden tours to see how much it has grown since yeah, it's gotten taller since the last garden tour yeah and but i uh, can't wait to get this another plant i want to do of this is a bay leaves but that's later down the road uh over here we got some more sun choke uh here we got some artichokes that just can't get i'm not sure if i need to put more nitrogen uh, fertilizer in here or some bone meal if y'all have any success of growing uh, artichoke comment down below let us know how you grow artichokes I'm starting to feel like it might be the container it I might. don't know oh, yeah well this container has been doing a lot better than this fabric container so but this container is a lot bigger as well so maybe we need to big do it in like in a 20 gallon container Who yeah knows? Uh, this is another squash. This hasn't had any problems with any squash bugs that I know of. What about, do you know? I've only seen like one or two and I've killed them, but I haven't found any of the the uh, eggs on it like I have on the other ones or aphids. No aphids have been on that. Yeah, so this one's been a very healthy one and, and this one is just the uh, gray zucchini one. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, here is the ginger plant that we grew also from uh, the, the store and then This was like a what was this a blueberry raspberry? Yeah, it never did too well I think we didn't have the right pH Balance for here and then mrs. Naked Gardener put a sunflower it's in a here. black hoppy sunflower a black hoppy It's on the uh, cover of the um, Baker Creek okay. catalog and this has grown a lot since our last garden tour. So as you can see, it's getting pretty healthy. I think it can almost stand by itself now. Yeah, but we just keep that on there just for giggles. And then uh, next we'll go over to the uh, raised bed. All right, so this is our first bed we're gonna showcase. Uh, we got some tomatoes uh, growing uh, very well in here. Uh, they kind of took off a little bit taller than I wanted them to do. I'm debating on whether I should just go ahead and top them off. So that way when we put our shade uh, cloth over here, it won't uh, inhibit it to continue to grow. Uh, I don't know. Mr. Nick Garden is trying to talk me out of that, so we'll see. Uh, here we have one of our in-ground worm bins that we use. And as you can see, it's pretty much all composted out and it's ready to basically just use as a dressing here so that way you can we can continue using this as a uh, dressing slash fertilizer for our garden bed that's really come in handy having that yeah that bin. So uh, with a lot of this, we've been noticing, uh, you notice on our last garden tours, we got a few earwigs. I think I saw some uh, some uh, black soldier fly larva in here. And then we also, oh, we got an avocado in there. And I think we had some earthworms in here as well. Now that most of it is all decayed out, we should shift, uh, sift it out, but we'll just plant some of it around the plant and keep it going all right once again we're going to talk about our passion flower fruit or passion flower as you can see it's a beautiful uh, flower uh, these are very invasive I mean I can't even tell you how some of it has been coming out almost as far as here on the other side of the fence through the beds 
it's very invasive so if you have the space for this I would go ahead and grow it but this is just from one seed so be mindful of that these okras are the Jing orange okra and back behind here we have the uh, cucumber bush the bush variety bush cucumber variety and then mrs. Nikki Garner has her marshmallow uh, plant in here you can see we got some leaf miners that we need to probably spray spray some uh, uh, some neem oil on here most of the time when you get leaf miners like this uh, we've been having a lot of rain here in North Texas and with the with it being hot here the with after the rain and the humid humidity of this weather it causes the that's when you're gonna see a lot of these uh, leaf miners uh, there's two ways you can do it Let's see if you can you probably won't be able to get it no, it's too bright. yeah but you can see there's a, a bug right inside this leaf you can either just pluck it off and just squish it or you can just take it off but most of the time you just want to spray some neem oil so that way it won't uh, go inside of the uh, leaves there and suck off the nutrients of the plant uh, here we have another uh, in-ground worm bin and then we got this eggplant look at that baby we got a nice eggplant going to where it should be getting a nice fruit here pretty soon. Mrs. Naked Gardener just harvest. No, actually, I harvest that one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was very good. Uh, over here, we got some more okra growing. We're going to be we're going to take over the Broussards of the okra kings king family. Alabama reds. These are the Alabama reds. I can't wait to try these. These are going to the Alabama reds. Supposed to be like a short, stubby one. So we'll see how those turn out. Here uh, we have Mrs. Naked Gardener's loofahs. Uh, these loofahs have two purposes. Uh, if you eat them young, uh, they're supposed to be very tender, almost like a squash, cucumber type taste. Uh, however, most of these we're going to let them. Uh, ripen out and get very hard and use them as a uh, cleaning agent like a scrubbing pad or a body wash uh, material. Uh, Robin from Big Bear Homestead she told us about these. Didn't know you can grow these type of thing. We thought it from the sea orchard but as you can see they're just taking off and covering this. So we were going to put the night of uh, the shade cloth over here but we have a few that are flowering up at top, so we're gonna probably stop it over here so that way it can still continue to get some sun growth over there. All right, now we're next to our pepper container garden. Uh, on this side, we have our sweet to mild peppers. And on this side, we have our hot peppers. Uh, these, uh, these are the, I wouldn't say our first year trying to grow jalapenos, but uh, last year we forgot to even grow jalapenos. And this year we grew, we grew two containers worth of jalapenos and they've been popping off great. Uh, some to a point where they've been uh, We're letting them stay on a little bit too long and they've been getting red which is supposed to be a lot hotter uh, But these we've just harvested a lot of these uh, Yesterday, I believe it was you'll see the so, post on our Instagram. Yeah, we we uh, we do a lot of stuff on our Instagram that we do out in the garden uh, So we'll put a description down below to show you how to get to that account uh, These are the Jimmy Nardellos and I can't wait to try those out uh, but we've definitely been getting a good harvest off of these peppers and uh, now that it's starting to get in the 90s we're, we expect a lot of the flowers to start dropping especially once it gets above 95 reason why we're going to be putting a shade cloth uh, above this garden area to kind of keep it anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees a little bit lower than what it naturally is because in Texas we could get triple digit uh, weather real fast so next we'll go over to the worm bin. Before we head over there, I'm gonna talk about this tomatillo. This tomatillo plant, we didn't know it was 
this invasive. We thought it was like a bush variety uh, tomato plant, but this is just one plant. And look how, well actually this is one plant and that's one plant. And it's basically taken over this bed. From so these. we will never plant a tomatillo in our beds again. Yeah, we learned from uh, the people that were uh, on our live the other day. They were telling us how invasive the tomatillo it is. And it's just shading out a lot of the plants right here. Kind of shading out our garden beans and our Mad Hatter uh, tomatoes or with the sugar crushed cream peppers back there that's kind of slowly growing out. Uh, if this didn't have flowers on it right now and we wouldn't expect these purple tomatillos to start producing for us, we'll probably take these out the bed. But we're going to sacrifice the other plants for the first time growing these. So we'll see how that goes uh, now we'll go over to the uh, worm bin all right next we'll go over to our worm bin uh, if you remember me doing a video on this last year it didn't go too well uh, because when you first get these worms we got these worms from uh, Uncle Jim worm farm and uh, you got to let these uh, worms get comfortable in their natural surroundings and they were tr always trying to escape so you got to have constant light on these and uh, I think I left the lid open too much one time and I, I seen when I came home one time there were birds around it and they were probably plucking it out uh, but now we were able to get them all comfortable before we transferred them into this bed and kept their same bedding and I just fed on this side so about every 10 days we feed on the other side from our natural food waste that we have so well all of this is uh the new side fed over here so all the worms are over here and there's even some uh, black soldier flies as well along with some roly polies so all of those are natural com composters so uh hopefully towards the end of the season once it gets a little bit too full we'll be able to put it out into the beds as a natural uh, fertilizer and uh, soil amendments for our, all of our beds. All right, now we're in our tomato alley, and this is basically where all our most of our tomatoes are going to be grown uh, that we planned out from the beginning of the season. Uh, here are the Jersey Devils. Mm -hmm. and there is one uh, Aunt Ruby's. Yeah, green. this one's the Aunt Ruby, and the flowers on these are huge, so I can't wait. To see look how big those flowers are so I can't wait to basically get some good uh, tomatoes off of these and these are the uh, we showed y'all these in our last garden tour mrs. Nicky Gardner bought these where you can just adjust the flow right here and just a regular old water bottle or whatever it needs needs to be so I feel like it's really been helpful yeah so you just adjust it however you see fitting, put it in there, and set it and forget it. Uh, next we'll go over to here. Here are our walking kale. And if you remember uh, one of our videos, they were uh, very- Our uh, BT spray video. Yeah, they were ridden with bug bites and stuff like that. As you can see, they look a lot better now. And with the walking stick kale, this is uh, Baker's Creek first time. Uh, this year is the first time they're releasing it. And they could get anywhere from what they say, anywhere from 12 to 15 feet tall. So uh, I think we're gonna try to, I'm not sure if you could top off brassicas, but we're gonna try to find out. We're gonna see how long they, or how tall they can get uh, and go from there. <laughs> Next, we have our tomatoes. Uh, from our last video, you saw that they were very short. They weren't even up to here. With this heat, it's been thriving very well. Here we have the pork chop tomatoes. Uh, we have more uh, blue cream tomatoes, and these blue cream tomatoes look like they're about to pop off some uh, nice some fruit right there. We have your little zinnia here too, the only one that survived. Well, we got these zinnias as well. They do. Oh, yeah. they, they're trying. Yeah, they're trying the grass is basically just trying to take over. And then here we have our pineapple tomatoes. We gotta put some more clips, yeah. Clips and get this. After up. that rain they just did a, a quick little 
growth yeah. spurge. And then Mrs. Nikki Gardner surprised me one weekend. I came back home with this uh, yellow pear that she got. So. Well. Mm -hmm. When the devil's made, away. Uh, oh. The wife will play. Uh -huh. I got you. So she needs to. We need to get these clipped up on here. And what we're going to try to do is get this as like a, a bush variety, so make it almost like a hedge. And we don't really have to worry about cross-pollinating because uh, from what Jazz from Roots and Refuge were saying, unless you keep that tomato and use the seed for the following year, I believe that's the next time where you will have to cross uh, worry about cross-pollination. And we're not going to be, I don't think we're going to be saving any seeds from our tomatoes. We'll, we'll see. Uh, next, we're going to go over to the Oprah Lane. All right, here we have our Oprah Lane. And we got these Oprahs from uh, Rob from Ession's Family Garden. And uh, he was able to bless us with some of these Oprah. And these were what kind of Oprah again? It's the Red Velvet. Through the Red Velvet Oprah. Uh, from there, his 2019 harvest. The, yeah, he had uh, saved these seeds from last year. And he decided to give us some. Uh, so we're going to try these out and it kind of works as a dual purpose because now we're able to enter the uh, Nathan Sampson Farm uh, Okra Challenge. And so uh, by the time you see this, you already uh, seen the Okra Challenge video and how we set this up. And this is another experiment where we're trying out different containers and different soils. So this is this area right here is our homemade soil mixture and we're trying out with mrs nicka gardner's uh, uh, uh vinyl plastic bag here and i'm trying out with these uh, regular uh plastic containers and these fabric containers over here we got the uh miracle grow uh mix in here same okra same containers uh here is what the uh potty mix that we first started out with when we did container gardening and this is the Kellogg's uh, container gardening uh, we've used this a lot even in some of our raised beds uh, once again same container style and here how you say this uh, soil Vigaro. Vigaro so this is the Vigaro uh, potting mix blend and once again the same mixture style from there so as you can see, we got a lot of stuff going on here. So we do a lot of these garden tours. We'll put a playlist above to so show you other types of garden tours that we have done in the past. And so you can see the progression from there. If you're new to the channel and haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss an upload. Until the next video, let's grow together.